a journey of home renovation and maintenance. Welcome to Maintaining 18. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to 2021. What you're seeing is the internals of a tankless water heater. And notice the leak. Connected to the tankless water heater is an expansion tank. The expansion tank was harshly struck and the result, a water leak. The flow meter is broken. On inspection, the damage is a partially severed flow meter. The water, therefore, escaped the pipe to my left. The first repair attempt was using a two-part epoxy useful for wet conditions capable of withstanding heat and high water pressure. Epoxy reduced the leak to a low but constant leak. During the application of the epoxy, the weight of the expansion tank entirely severed the pipe. A clamp eased the importance of the expansion tank. Hello, welcome back to How To With Q. Now today, we're fixing our shop sink. Um, we got all of our piping supplies. I got my wire, got my pipe wrench and uh, piping compound. So let's get into it. So if you hit it a couple times, just make, make sure you're safe under here. Just gotta bash it a couple times. Now Billy, turn it on, it should be good now. We should be good to go. What the hell is he? You can guess this happened at an ungodly hour. You are viewing a second repair attempt with a putty based epoxy. That epoxy should have been used first but was not available for purchase at the local store. Luck punished me for the product selection compromise. It wasn't easy to fit the putty around the pipe. The previous epoxy repair attempt left a narrow area between the pipe and the cabinet of the tankless water heater. The putty worked well and the repair failed. A contributing factor to failure and a presumption is epoxy does not adhere to smooth plastic well. The epoxy would have to hug the entire pipe and therefore stick to itself and the plastic. Another reason for failure was in the application. From observation, the epoxy has to cover the flow meter. For some reason, this did not seem as a good idea as it was observed with previous repairs that the leak was to the rear of the flow meter. This repair was followed up with another application of a two-part epoxy. Three different types of epoxy from the same company. With the leak tremendously reduced, the water heater was now put back in service. There is a problem. After a phone call to technical support, the tech recommended opening the flow control valve and clean it out. Four screws held the flow control valve cover in place. These were removed. There was some epoxy covering the screw it was easily put aside. The epoxy was also preventing the cover from being removed. The epoxy was easily put aside. The epoxy which has seeped into the flow meter is removed. The wheel which was prevented from spinning by the epoxy is replaced and tested as working. The rubber part broke during disassembly and may have contributed to the leaks. Flow meter is then reassembled. Prior to disassembling the flow meter, it was disconnected from the circuit board. 
it is now being reconnected this was the instruction which the tech gave to repair the problem in addition to this the tech gave enough information to order a new flow meter see the description The leak was a bit severe, more than could be stomached, and so another round of epoxy was applied. This is the third round and a different type of epoxy. The epoxy is a quick setting epoxy, but because the water was not turned off, the epoxy was displaced and therefore the leaks continued but was significantly reduced. Not being able to use the dishwasher was not the only inconvenience. The family had to bathe like this guy. Our final display, steaming nicely, perfect temperature. Here you go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Plumbers took around two weeks to appear. Well, to be honest, I never got around to ordering that part for you, so uh, it's still going to be a couple of weeks. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. A plumber recommended changing the entire unit, believing the flow meter broke because of poor maintenance. There may also have been a liability issue, callbacks, that kind of thing. To give a timeline of this issue, it took about four days to get the epoxy to this level. Those four days included calls to uh, tech support to resolve the issue with the flow meter. It took an additional three days to order and obtain flow meter and then it took around two weeks for a plumber to make it out to repair the unit. The epoxy reduced the leak to a drip and bought some additional time. There were other projects screaming for attention which were more urgent and so the repair was abandoned and favor a plumber to continue. At one point it was mentioned that the epoxy did not adhere properly to the plastic. The epoxy was easily chipped away. Then the new flow meter was installed. This took two plumbers an hour to complete. In addition, the expansion tank was supported with a strap. That was my idea. In retrospect, if something of this nature happens, it's best to skip the epoxy and replace the broken part. There are more episodes starring the heater in the works. The heater has to be relocated and at some point flushed. And with that, the episode concludes. And with the help of plumbers, the day is one.